Hey guys, uh, we are done with session, <laughs> and can I just say thank God. Um, it was a long day, 10 a.m. to about 6.30. We just wrapped up maybe 5, 10 minutes ago. Um, 70.26 wrapped up around 6 p.m. They heard pretty much all of the amendments. Uh, several of them were uh, removed from the table or temporarily postponed uh, until they could be rewritten. Um, it actually wasn't too bad of a day. Uh, pretty much all of the things that we didn't want passed uh, that would have infringed on the Second Amendment, uh, they, they got kicked off the table. So that's great. We don't have an assault weapons ban. We don't have a moratorium. Uh, we don't have a ban on um, what they call extended magazines or high capacity magazines. We don't have a moratorium on purchases or anything like that. Uh, it does suck 21 and under or under 21 uh, is still prohibited from purchasing any firearms according to the law or according to the bill. Uh, it is still under proposal. Uh, We'll go into a couple of the other amendments as we went through, but as it sits now, they did approve for it to go into the third reading. It will be, uh, they will go back into the session at about 10 a.m. on Monday. Uh, it doesn't look like the bill will probably get read on schedule until at least uh, 11, 11, 30. They do have some continuing business to handle before that. So uh, th they'll probably read all of the rest of the bills under third reading before they read uh, 7026 just so they can get it out of the way and then they will uh, they will go into session and, and hear final amendments and they will vote on the bill so we are close to finalizing uh, whether or not uh, certain gun control measures are, are taken up in the state uh, a couple of the ones that I actually want to talk about that were interesting uh, interesting changes that actually got voted down which you know, good, bad, or indifferent were at least compromises to the all or nothing campaign strategy of the Democrats. Uh, one of the amendments proposed would have restricted, um, you know, high capacity magazines and firearms with uh, fixed or removable magazines over uh, 20 or over 10 rounds uh, for anybody under the age of 21. But what it would have allowed them to do is um, still purchase uh, semi automatics with uh, magazines under 10 or under uh, rounds or fixed. Um, uh, fixed capacity weapons like shotguns pump action and stuff like that that uh, are under 10 rounds so it would still have allowed some items to be purchased by those under the age of 21 uh, for security purposes and stuff like that in their own homes um, since you aren't allowed to conceal carry a shotgun or a rifle the presumption is that because handguns are still illegal for purchase under the age of 21 that you wouldn't have uh you know, as they so-called youngsters or children uh, running around with deadly weapons, as the people in the Senate like to call it. Uh, some of the other bills that got shot down, which were important, was uh, the removal of teachers, um, arming teachers. They did allow for some allotances and changes to that program. Uh, most of those were shot down. Um, they did allow uh, some discussion on the fact that private schools were left out of the bill. Um, and even though they're private, uh, some of the funding and research that would have gone on um, for schools and armament and some of the studies that would have gone in, on and stuff like that uh, would not have included private schools. So they were trying to expand that. Uh, they did table that motion. Um, so it is possible that they still will be doing studies and including um, private schools in those studies, which I think is important because uh, private school models are, typically tend to be better educational institutions and allow for more freedoms. Um, and I think, you know, as an educational institution, we should start looking at them for both creativity and for the ways that, you know, they, they govern both the, the body of the teachers and, and the students. Um, because let's be honest, our educational system just isn't working the way it exists as right now. So, uh, not much changed. There were some technicalities that changed. Uh, there were a, a few bits of language that changed, and uh, I still need to go and print out the new bill as it sits. Uh, some of the things that we need to be aware of with the rally that is going to be going on in Tallahassee tomorrow, uh, senators have until 5 p.m. tomorrow to submit all amendments for reading, for uh, reading on the 
third reading tomorrow for the bill. So as I said before, there's three readings. There's one in committee, there's a second one where most of the amendments are introduced, and then you have a third reading as it sits. Any, any amendments adopted under the third reading automatically go into the bill without changes to the bill, and the bill is voted as is. Uh, so that's an important uh, thing to distinguish because uh, we still have till tomorrow at 5 p.m. to actually talk to our senators and get amendments added to the docket so that they can be read on uh, Monday and voted for. So that means everyone who is up here in Tallahassee tomorrow, if your senators are in their offices and they let us into the Capitol building, uh, we will have a chance to actually go and talk to our senators uh, and, and get them to adopt some measures that, that we might actually want in it. If not, I know for a fact that uh, CBS, CNN, um, I believe uh, NBC or MSNBC, one of the two, is, is here as well. I talked to a couple of the media press. Um, we are getting good traction. There are a lot of people here in the Capitol that support it that aren't necessarily senators. The senators are looking at it politically and, and just trying to get something passed because a lot of them are getting reelected or a lot of them are, are kind of trying to do a compromise and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of the staff workers that work here, a lot of the aides, a lot of the people who, you know, say from a civilian standpoint, from a citizen standpoint, uh, they don't agree with what's going on. So there is support. I mean, we our citizens, our, our constituents, the, the people that we represent, they, they believe the same things we do. But, you know, in the efforts of politics, obviously, laws get construed and, you know, ideas get thrown around and everything like that. So it's going to be important for us when we show up tomorrow. Let's look professional. Let's act as a group. Don't be aggressive. Don't yell at people. Don't scream at people. Don't call people out. Let's be professional. Let's get our ideas out there. You know, talk with information. Google search tonight all the facts that you can get and provide facts. All we've heard is emotional arguments over and over and over. Assault weapons ban. We need to ban them for the children. We need to ban them for our society. We need to ban them for all this. They're all emotional arguments. No one has provided any evidence that it makes it any safer. And the evidence that they did provide is contradicted by actual statistics. So... I think it's going to be very important uh, when we get here tomorrow that we actually provide a educated voice for people so that they can understand why it's important that we don't strip away these rights, that we make sure that when they pass laws like these that they don't just throw together some trash bill because this is going to affect thousands if not millions of Floridians and this thing is going to pass soon. I, As it sits right now, I don't know that it has the favor I mean, these votes were close. We're talking about 20 to 17 votes on an assault weapons ban. We're talking about, you know, 18 to 19 votes on extended mag capacity, uh, you know, uh, magazines being uh, not allowed to be sold or, or owned and stuff like that. I mean, you're talking about serious policy changes that is going to affect the outlook of gun control in Florida. And, and Florida has been the model for many states on an effective gun control policy because, you know, we, we don't have too much of an issue here. I mean, yeah, there's shootings. There's shootings everywhere. You go to Chicago, there's shootings. You go to New York, there's shootings. You go to, you know, California, there, there's shootings. You you know, there's there's gun violence everywhere, but a lot of that gun violence is gang-related. It's, it's, you know, suicides. It's abuse and stuff like that. And while this bill tries to take care of some of it, we can't allow the good parts of a bill to be overshadowed by the bad parts of a bill. You know, just because we're we're trying to play nice with a bunch of people that don't care because all they care about is a political motive rather than actually making sure that the uh, the rights and the abilities of true Americans are maintained. So get out here, give good arguments, email your senators tonight, call them, leave voicemails, you know, make sure that anything that they are trying to pass in this, that they have heard your voice. If you haven't had a chance to get on Facebook, make yourself a constituent under the, the town hall um, ability that they have and uh, let them recognize that you have a voice. You know, I heard Senator Stewart, who is technically my senator, although she's not my senator, hashtag, uh, you know, she said that all I've heard from constituents is that they want an assault weapons ban. All I've heard from constituents is that we don't want guns in teachers' hands. All I've heard from constituents is this, that, and the other. Well, I'm here to tell you I went by her office four times. I attempted to drop off a letter. 
I attempted to make contact with her. She wasn't having it. She did not want to speak to me because she knew I was pro Second Amendment. So for her to sit on the Senate floor today and say that her constituents believed that, you know, these things are absolutely necessary is a complete falsehood. Do not let them lie. Hold them accountable. Make sure that dissenting voices against their own echo chamber, you know, sound boxes are heard because we're sick and tired of these representatives coming up here and not representing the actual people. So it's very important that we make sure that our voices are heard because if not, we're just going to be whitewashed out of history when it comes to, you know, Democrats and Republicans just passing bills just for the sake of passing bills because it looks good in an election year. We've seen it way too many times, but on issues like these, we need to hold steadfast. It's very important. Uh, that flag right above me right there, it represents this state. We need to act as a state. We need to act as a joint unit and let them know that these aren't just individuals, that we are a voting body and that we have the ability to change votes in their districts. So be loud, get out there. If you can, make it up to the rally tomorrow. I will be here. Uh, we'll try to shoot out some videos and photos and keep you guys updated. Uh, again, thanks for all the support. And I really hope that, you know, just take this serious. It is happening. If you think that your representatives are going to be able to block this, don't believe that. Republicans are absolutely on board with the fact that this is going to have to get passed because Governor Scott wants it. So um, it's going to be interesting what bill ends up... Uh, ends up making it out of the Senate, um, well, most likely Monday, unless for whatever reason there are amendments that they don't approve of. If this bill gets voted down, that means it's going straight back to committee or it's going back for more hearings and they're going to hear more amendments. So as it stands, I don't know where the vote count is, but it is extremely close. And I am telling you one or two senators who are on the edge can make the difference. So hit your senators up, make sure they know, and then let this thing go to the House. Uh, there's a much more favorable pro-Second Amendment group in the House, or at least I, I truly believe or hope that there still is. And uh, if that's the case, then, you know, let's let's take it there. Let's fight it there. Let them add amendments. And uh, let, let's, if this thing is going to get passed, let's make the, the least restrictive bill that we can get. And if we can, let's totally shoot this thing down and let's make them go to special session. Or honestly, let's just get this thing voted down outright. Um, you know, that's all I can say. Get out there. Be loud. Make the difference. You are the difference. Light that torch, libertarians. Light that torch, conservatives. Light that torch. Let your senators know that you stand on principle and you're not just going to tow party lines anymore, you know, because... It's necessary to get a vote. It's necessary to get your people in. No, it's necessary to get principled people in. It's necessary that your ideals are actually represented rather than just being, you know, whitewashed in the efforts of a political campaign. So be strong, be loud, be respectable, and, and let's make the difference, Florida.